Hi, this video shows a simulation technique for the classic rotation flap, how the defect is triangulated, how the flap is marked and how it is moved. The training also shows the back cut, how it is made and how it is utilized to ensure good closure of the defect with the rotation flap. This is the small defect for which the rotation flap is going to be done. First, it is triangulated. The triangle ABC must be an isosceles triangle with the two sides AC and BC equal and the angle at the apex point C must be less than 30 degrees. Now, the length of the segment AB is measured. The line AC is now extended and on this line, the distance equal to AB is marked out. Here the marking is done. And this point is called D. This point D is going to be the center of the arc of rotation of the flap. The distance CD is equal to AB. Now, a twine is taken, kept stable at the point D, which is going to be the center of arc of rotation. And from the point A, it is now extended as an arc with a radius equal to AC plus CD, which is going to be the radius of this rotation flap. Now, it is marked at different points. This flap has to be marked about 5 to 6 times the, the distance AB, because that is the distance through which the flap will have to move to cover the defect. Now this rotation flap is marked. This flap can be marked only up to the diameter which is formed by the extension of the line A, C, D. The flap should not be marked beyond this point. Having marked this imaginary line for the arc, the incision is now marked. This incision, as we have said, goes about 5 to 6 times the length of AB but it can go up to the diametric line which is formed by the extension of the line A, C, D. Now, the defect is excised. So, the triangular defect A, B, C is excised. Now, the incision for the flap is made. The incision starts from the point B. At this point, we need to remember that the point D is the center of the arc of rotation and this point is the pivot point of the flap. Here, for demonstration, the flap is being raised till the point where it reaches the diametric line. Once the flap is raised, it will be rotated in such a way that the defect is closed. Now, the flap inset can be done. In real life, when this is being done, it is important to remember that widespread undermining must be done on the surrounding tissues so that this can be achieved without tension. Flap inset without tension is very important to ensure that the vascularity of the flap is maintained. In areas like the scalp where the skin is thick and quite inextensible, it may be necessary to do other procedures like scoring of the gallia to allow for easy movement of the flap into the defect. If at any point before the flap is inset or during the flap inset, it is felt that the flap inset is tight, we need to do a back cut. The length of this back cut must be equal to half of the distance AB which we had calculated earlier. This is known as the internal type of back cut where the back cut is done along the diametric line ACD. If it is felt that the blood supply through this 
pedicle should not be compromised then the back cut should not be done as shown here but it should be done outside the arc which is explained in the video on rotation flaps. Once the back cut is done the flap inset becomes easier. This is because when the back cut is done the pivot point moves a little closer to the center of the arc of rotation and the distance that needs to be covered becomes less. The remaining inset of the flap is now completed. I hope you like this video. To see the videos regarding the classification of flap and the introduction to flaps, please go through these links and do subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery.